All right, well now that we have our net voltage and our individual voltages, let's go ahead and, and move on. Now remember that the only two that we haven't calculated yet are potential energy and force. Why? Because we only had one Q related to the origin here. Because there's only one Q here and one Q here. So we need a second Q. Where does it come from? Well, let's just arbitrarily bring one in from infinity. So I'm going to just take this, take a negative two microcoulomb charge. Again, I'm choosing num numbers that are relatively easy. And let's say that it's brought, it's pushed from infinity. I'm just going to make some arbitrary shape. Could have been pushed in actually from any direction. And so now, right at the origin, we're going to have a negative two uh, microcoulomb charge at infinity. Well, now that we have two, um, now that we have uh, uh, ch two charges here and two charges here, we can calculate the force. Let's go ahead and do that first one. Well, the first one, by root force again, F equals K, and then we have um, 6 E to the ninth, 2 E to the minus 6, again there's absolute values, that's why I didn't put in the, the negative sign, times r squared, which is again that 3 here. Now without a calculator, 3, 3, and 9's cancel, and these 3 cancel with that 6, which gives me 2 times 6, which is 12, e, 9, oh, that was minus 6, that's my mistake there. Right, that's a minus six. Okay, so it's nine minus six is minus three. Or, and actually, I'm going to leave it that way. There's a reason why I'm going to leave that that way for later, and that's newtons. Let's go ahead and bring that in because there are many times that you're not actually going to do that in your head. So it's nine e to the ninth times six times ten to the minus sixth times two to the minus sixth divided by 3 times 10 to the minus 3 squared boom exactly what we have oh positive three, positive 4 okay yeah notice that's supposed to be a positive there okay all right now I could have done this an easier way and let me show you who that is notice I have newtons per coulomb now I have coulombs so I'm going to multiply that just by 2 e to the negative 6. And that gives me 12 times 10 to the third newtons. You should really memorize that this is actually q times e. So down here we're going to do this. That f equals q in coulombs times e in newtons per coulomb. Well that gives me 4.5 10 to the ninth times that 2 times 10 to the minus 6th that gives me 2 times 4.5 is 9 times 10 to the third newtons. That's why I lift this as 10 to the thirds because now we can do Pythagorean theorem quite easily. So let me go ahead and clean this up very quickly. And because it's a vector we have to use Pythagorean theorem. So our net force is going to equal F1 squared plus F2 squared. Or you should get to the point where you can do it this way. The net force equals Pythagorean theorem, first one squared plus your second one squared. And this is only if they're X and Y. I guess I should probably write them that way so that we remember that we're actually talking about perpendicular vectors x and y. Okay, well let's put that in. So our net electric field is going to equal the square root, which we're going to mean to be pretty big, 12 10 to the third squared plus 9 times 10 to the third squared. Let's bring that in. I think you're going to be rather surprised. We get the square root of 
9 times 10 to the third, oh, 10 to the, yeah, third squared plus 12 times 10 to the third squared. I'm not sure any of that parentheses or not. Ah, 15 times 10 to the third. So it actually turns out to be 15 times 10 to the third. All right, newtons. Now, by the way, I would have just put 12 squared and 9 squared gives me 15 squared, and I would have just put this here. Because if you think about the triangle, if they're all sides are 10 to the third, the hypotenuse had better be 10 to the third. Now, also, did you see how this is 3 times 4, 3 times 3, and this is 3 times 5. This is just a 3, 4, 5 triangle, by the way. All right. Let me go ahead and clean this up, and then we'll worry about direction in a second. Well, we did the long way here doing Pythagorean theorem, but again, to find these, we figured out we could just do QE. Well, guess what? There's E again. So our net force could be found by just doing Q times my net electric field. This is always true. Newtons times Newtons per Coulomb times Coulombs gives me Newtons. Well, here we go. That equals, there's our new charge times our net electric field gives me 2 times 7.5 there's our 15 times 10 to the third newtons which is 1.5 times 10 to the fourth newtons okay that's an easier way of doing it well let's figure out direction here let me go ahead and clean this up a little bit well um, it actually turns out that and actually I think I'm gonna pause here and go back and clean this up because it's gonna well I think I can move this over real quickly so if I take all of this move it over right there we can get our direction well we know that this was that our electric field was found by a small positive test charge which would go that way pulled by the negative pushed by the positive but this is a negative so it's going to be pushed by the negative and pulled by the positive let me go ahead and do that in a different color it's going to be pushed by the negative and pulled by the positive. So it's a net electric, net electric force is going to be in this direction. And as you should start to learn, positive test charges go with the field, which would be this way, because that's how we define it. Negative charges go against the field, which is 180 degrees away from what we already found. So all we have to do is put at 127 degrees plus or minus 180. So if you add one, 180 you end up in the 300s. Before we did it with, uh, we added 180 so I'm going to subtract it this time. So that gives me 53 degrees we had again. Or again, you could have added 180 and got into the, what is it, 207 or something like that. Okay? That's our net electric force because negatives go, the, go opposite or against E. Okay?